Alright, so let's start this flag tutorial. So the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you're, you know, starting out a new uh, new document, anything like this, is you're going to want to go up to File and click New. This is after you've already downloaded Inkscape. You can find Inkscape by just Googling Download Inkscape on uh, any browser. That'll bring you up to a page. There should be a download button there, and boom, you're done. It's free software, so... You know, you don't have to pay any money for it, unlike Photoshop. Um, but yeah, let me get on to the next thing now. Uh, basically, you gotta make a square. This is sort of your flag outline. So you're gonna want to start, just drag it across. It can be however big you want it to be. To be honest, right now you're just trying to build a general square shape. They're gonna go up here. So these are your kind of like uh, dimensions. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make it 200 width, and you're going to make it 100 in height. And you're going to make sure that's in the millimeter setting right there, because that what that'll do is it'll make a very nice rectangular shape, which you can then base your flag design on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to fill and stroke. Make sure the fill is on this little X. That means there's no paint. That means it's just it's empty. But then you're going to want to go over to Stroke Paint, and you're going to want to turn it onto a solid color, just a flat color. And want to keep that as black, just so that you have a nice little outline image there. And then you're going to want to go over to this little uh, zoom in, zoom out. The X can also be uh, toggled on with the F3 uh, function key. And then you just want to, uh, what is this? Right click, no, left click. <laughs> and I know what I'm doing, I totally know what I'm doing. Um, just click a few times, and you can zoom in, shift click to zoom out. It's very useful. Anyway, now I think we're just going to start off by doing a very, very simple flag design. So, with this tool, this is the pen tool, you can use this to draw straight lines or semi-straight lines. If you click on the corner, and you can just drag it around to draw a line. Now, you can also use this ruler up here and this ruler along the side to make sure your measurements are straight and nice looking. So we're going to go out to about, to about 80 here. And we're going to actually get a control click because control click makes a perfectly straight line. Um, then right there, there you go. Actually, we're going to go back to, I'd say, 80. And we're going to go up a little bit just so it's at just two right there. And then we're going to drag it back down here. And it's going to automatically um, connect to the corner because we have corner snapping on. Now, what we can do to turn that off is we can sh hold shift and then five um, and that will turn that off so now you don't have to deal with any like uh, clipping issues I actually like it on for the most part because it's a lot easier to work with but aside from that it's pretty it's pretty good now what we're gonna do with this is we're just gonna cl click uh, control C and then control V so it's nice and copied and we're just going to move it out a little bit so we have a nice uh, thick stripe here. And then we're going to use this just to drag it in. Because we don't want that thick of a secondary thing. There we go. That's pretty nice looking right there. Yeah, look at that. There you go. Like no, I like that. That's what I like. So then, what we're going to do is that we are going to go on the internet. And we're going to find an image. I'm going to do this by just going to a browser. I'm just going to search up, I don't know, um, how about flower uh, line drawing. Now you want to use line drawings the size of any other drawings because line drawings uh, can be very easily brought into this program. Using anything else is a little more tricky, but just for this, this is pretty easy. So I'm just going to copy this image by right clicking on it and I'm just going to control V it in. Now, right now, it has a white background. We do not want this. This is, it'll hide everything else and it will look very ugly. What we could do is we go to object and lower it to the bottom so that then other things overlap on top of it. But we don't want that because we want to have a colored background. So instead what we can do is we can go to path and then trace bitmap and then we can click update and now OK. And what this will do is it'll make a nice little outline of it without having that background. So now, we just raise this to the top, and it'll still be nice looking. Whereas this is the, the old one, which has a disgusting background. So get rid of that, 
Now we're just going to downsize this so it's fitting nicely in that little um, section there. And we're going to drag it off just so that it doesn't mess with any of the fill tools. So the next thing we're going to do is go to this little bucket here. This allows us to fill different bounded areas. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just click it down here. Make sure the stroke paint is set to off because it'll be on since you made that, that larger square. We want it to be off because if it's on, it'll look very ugly. We'll have a black line around it. So we're just going to click flat color. Now fill basically the whole thing up. You will notice that it will have a little, a little area along the edge that isn't filled, which is very annoying. This is why all of my flags have white lines. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute, but it's very labor intensive trying to manually fix it. And it's just, it's not worth it in my opinion. Um, I kind of like the, the white lines. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the HSL um, color selection thing. And we're just going to mess around with it. Get us a nice green color. There we go. I like that. And then we're going to go here. And we're going to put down, I think, maybe a, a yellow. I'm liking a yellow here. And then here, we're going to put down maybe a nice blue. Yeah, a nice little pastel blue. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of, um, now we're going to bring in the flower. Bring in the flower. So this design right now, this has a flower on a blue um, blue background. So this could look fine, but I actually don't like this. So what I want to do instead is bring the flower back in before we fill it. Because we put the fill in uh, before we put the flower in, then it'll be a flower on a blue background. But if you put, bring in the flower and then and then you fill. We're actually going to move the flower a little bit so it's more centered and nice looking. There we go. But if you put the, put in the fill now, what it'll do is it'll fill the bounded area around the flower and use the flower itself as the outline. Now we're also going to fill the center of the flower. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. And then we're just going to remove that. And we have it pretty cool. Still eat that image. Now we've got a nice little flowery thing right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to delete the outline. You could keep the outlines, the little black lines, but they are really there so that all the fill tools work and they only fill the seconds you want them to. There's kind of a guiding line really. What we can do is we can zoom in and delete the different lines. Now what you could also do is this tool right here. This tool is to edit paths. If you click on an item like this, it'll give you nodes you can drag that node to change how the thing is, is working, how it's how long it is. That's good for small edits. But you can also use this tool to sort of drag the colors together so you can get rid of those white lines. But I'm just going to keep the white line right here. We can use, of course, always use Control z to turn back things. Get rid of changes we didn't like. Um, yes, yeah, so then we're going to go over here. Just delete this line. Just like that. And now we have a pretty beautiful flag. I'm just gonna select all of this. Remember to select all of it. Because if you only if you don't select all of it, it'll only resize to a smaller amount. I click on file, I click on document properties, I'm gonna drag this over, I'm gonna click on resize page to content, then resize page to drawing or selection. And now the file is just as big as the flag. So now you have this beautiful little flag. You can post anywhere you want. Now to save this, we're going to click Save As. And then I have all my different picture categories. I'm going to put my flags. And I'm going to label this as um, Tutorial Flag. Tutorial Flag. You can name it whatever you want. And then you want to save it as an SVG. That's very important. SVGs are an editable document that automatically saves from this. They're the easiest to edit. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but we're also going to save it as a PNG. SVGs are really only viewable as an editable file on Inkscape, uh, whereas PNGs are a pretty universal picture file that you can post on Discord. These are all the, the uh, various flags I have posted on Discord from this computer. Now, I have two computers that I, <laughs> that I use, so it gets a little painful sometimes because I have all these different flags on two different devices, on two different hard drives that I have to um, kind of remember which ones are on which. And then... Now what we're going to do is we're going to close this out. And remember, this is going to say that it may cause, cause data loss because we saved as a PNG last. 
do not pay attention to this if you've already saved it as an SVG. And they can just click here to save it as an SVG or not. So we're just going to click X on that. And we're going to click on Open. Now we're going to click on, um, what is it? Flags and tutorial flag, just as the PNG right here. What this will do is now we have the PNG open from another file. And it looks normal, right? But when you start to zoom in, it becomes very pixelated. This is what happens when you try to edit a PNG file. You'll also notice that it's one entity. It's not a bunch of different lines you can edit. It's just one thing. It's just one picture. However, if we open up, um, what is it? We open up the uh, SVG file. On the other hand, this one we can zoom in as much as we want, as much as we want, and it still has good quality. And everything is its own entity that can be individually edited. That's why you want to say things as SVGs. Um, yeah. So thank you for watching this tutorial. If there's anything else you'd like to know, please leave a comment or DM me on Discord. My Discord will be linked in the description. Uh, thank you, and goodbye.